another edition of the Doc Talk Podcast presented by Betfred Sports. I'm Travis Justice. The man over there on his phone right now is Dr. Rob Zadiska. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, make sure to hit subscribe, all right? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we put out a lot more content than just the podcast. You'll get the Doc's Diagnosis, Behind the Point Spread. You might even get some shorts, some stuff like that. If you're listening on Podbean, Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartMedia, anywhere you get your podcast, make sure to hit subscribe to that. Give us a follow. Give us a review if you have some time. And also, share it with somebody. If you think somebody needs to hear this podcast, damn it, share it with them. We want to get the word out. Well, everybody needs to hear the podcast. I, I don't disagree with you. Every, every single person. Dr. Rob loaded up in the August Stana gear, coming off a Division II playoff win at home, beating Minnesota State Mankato. You're on Fif- cloud nine. 51-24. to 51-24? 24. 24? Yeah, wasn't even close. Do you, know, do, you know what, do you know what kills? What? Speed kills. Yes. Which, besides speed, the next thing that kills is turnovers. Yeah. Augustana forced. It's it's interesting. They actually count. So this is interesting. I hadn't thought about this. I mean, they always say turnover on downs, but they count if they hold an opponent on a fourth down attempt, and the and so they they had two. Mankato had two fourth down attempts. Augie held them on both. They count that as a turnover. That goes into the and I know they call it a fourth down, a turnover on downs. Yeah. Augustana puts that into their official stat line as a turnover. The defense counts that as a turnover, which after sitting there thinking about it, it makes sense. But anyway, Augustana had five uh, five interceptions. Wow. Forced to fumble and then had two turnovers on downs. Wow. So they had eight in their their stat column has them as basically forcing eight turnovers. So they advance in the division 2 playoffs to play what? The number 1 team in the country? So yeah, so the the D2 playoffs. I got to look at FCS and D3. I find it inter- I find all this shit like weirdly interesting now. I'm a junkie for this. But yeah, it's true regional. So you've got you've got four regions, top 7 teams in each region make the playoffs. It's a true regional. So the the re, I think it's Region Four. It, technically, it's Super Region Four because the NC2A likes to put words like "super" in front of stuff. Super Region Four, like the bulk of it, it's the Northern Sun Conference, which is like your Bemidji, Mankato, yeah, Wayne State, Nebraska. It's the old North Central Conference that UNO was in. Then you've got the Rocky Mountain. I think it's the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, and, and I mean that's like. Shadron State, but like Colorado School of Mines, Colorado Pueblo, so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, so they get Colorado School of Mines next, uh, and it just it's just luck of the draw. The fact that the number one team in the country happens to be in your region. It's not a C. It's not a nationally seeded thing. It it all goes by these true geographical regionals. So are you going to get in the car and go out to to Colorado? This I was weekend? just looking. That's about a seven and a half hour drive to Golden. Oh, it's in Golden. Yeah, so Mines is in Golden. So you could stop at the brewery, right? You could stop at Coors Mulsey. Oh, yeah, which actually a few people told me that it's literally just like down the street from from the Coors Brewery. You know, I I love a good Coors Banquet. I like Coors Banquet. I kind of my go-to... my go-to, I was going to say garage fridge beer, but I've got a lot of different garage fridge beers. Uh, my go-to, like, my, my cheap-ass American beer yeah. is Coors Light. Mainly because I'm scared of werewolves, and I like something called the Silver See, Bullet. I, I'm, so. I'm not a Coors Light guy. I'm more of a Coors Heavy guy. I like the Coors Banquet. If I I'm, like the Banquet beer. It's yeah. good. I just, I'm just saying, you can, I can see, dude. Coors Light. It's like the Gatorade of beers. No, I Bush mean, Light like, is like the Gatorade of beers. No, Bush Light is like the cheap, not even Powerade. It's like the cheap Powerade knockoff of beers. Okay, I can go for that. Yeah, it's Are just it's like it's it's like it's the do you know what it, it's the Walmart store brand of Gatorade, oh, whatever that is. I think is. that's Keystone. Do they even still make Keystone? Dude, no bitter beer face. It's got the specially <laughs> lined can, Travis. <laughs> yeah, do you know what they line the can with? Uh, what plastic? 
beer. beer. They line it's it with they, Keystone <laughs> Light. That's what it's lined with. But yeah, now I'll, I'll do I'll do Coors Light. That's that's my rehydration technique. Speaking of beer, uh, I was uh, got another delivery at MCL Construction this week because MCL, besides being a construction company, has turned into a beer distributorship where I, I seem to be the middleman, which is which is fine. But also, and we're of, super okay with that. Absolutely, you keep sending the beer if you want to know where to send it. Uh, email doctalksports at gmail dot com. But got another handwritten note. Uh, it says, uh, Robin Travis, first I want to say I love the podcast. Glad it's going year-round and hope that that continues. And it will be. Uh, we, we promise you that. I was born and raised in Nebraska, and even though now in Minneapolis area, I've moved around the country, and I am and always will be a diehard Husker fan. I meant to send beer for a while and now getting around to it. Not your typical styles, but kind of the beer uh, I like to drink. It's all from Side Project slash Shared, which is a small but uh, well-known brewery in St. Louis, where we used to live and still visit regularly. Hope you guys enjoy. Cheers, uh, GBR. That's from Scott Len, L-E-H-N. And I'll tell you what, we've had a lot of people send us beer. I don't know, Rob, and, and I posted it on your Twitter page just when the beer came in. I don't know if we've had a beer or a brewery get as many comments that elicited yes. a response yes. like that. Yeah. I you know that so I, I've heard a side project. I'm like 99.99% sure I have never had their beer. I know I haven't. And, and I knew it was like real fancy when four of the beers that we get come <laughs> in like wine bottles. You know, I mean, they, you, you you know, it's a they, they take extra and it's like labeled like a wine too. So the first one we're drinking is the a la table, which is an entry level sour, not too tart, low ABV, easy drinking. So far, it's, it's, it's an offshoot of a farmhouse ale. Yeah. Which I mean, if you drink if you drink enough craft beer and you drink enough farmhouse ales, I'm a big so I kind of one of the things that really got me into craft beer. They, they closed down now to focus on their Italian restaurant, but uh, oh, what was the place up in Benson? Up in Benson? Not in Benson. Uh, Blackstone? No. And the, the guys that had Avoli, the the Italian place. Oh, that was up in Dundee. Dundee. So yeah, what what was that place? Oh my gosh, the food was so Dario's. good. Dario's, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so go hang out at Dario's, and, the, and like all they served there for alcohol, yeah, was imported Belgian ales. And so I would drink these like these farmhouse Belgian ales. And if you have this, I'm sitting here going like, oh my god, they freaking nailed it. I mean, that is a great farmhouse ale. So the next one, so we've already, this bottle's empty already. We haven't, we, we have not consumed all of it yet. They're still in the glasses. And I thought we'd go really fancy. I got fancy beer glasses. Nice. Out you like that? My wife picked those out for us. Uh, the next one we're going to drink, because we've got two bottles out today, is the Single Farm Nelson, which is a dry hopped sour. Okay, that sounds really good, yeah, too. Yeah, so now they did send us four cans, and Owen, right back there in the newsroom, is drinking an ambient. What do you think of that ambient there, the, Owen? Uh, as I'm really getting into this now, this is like the strongest flavor of <laughs> every sip. I'm like, oh my god, that's a lot of flavor. It's it's like apple pie, but uh, yeah. The uh, so which, it, it's a it's a stout with cinnamon, uh, cocoa nibs, vanilla, and chilies. And that when sounds he, delightful. When he cracked it open, he goes, "Oh my god, god this beer so is dark." dark. <laughs> which. Okay, so what I want to know is, and I don't know if I have, I can't see it, if they actually put it on their label. What's that? I'm curious about like an alcohol by volume on these. Not because I'm getting hit with this, but I'm talking the the ambient that well, Owen's he, drinking. Do he know? said very high. Okay, he, he do, goes don't. He, and I even mean, Owen what, said that he goes I, about one of these is going to do. Okay, do you know what ambient is? No, that's that's like when somebody's like, hey, yeah, I, I take a sleeping pill at night to go to sleep. Ambien is the brand name for probably the most prescribed sleeping pills out there. All right, so this one we're drinking right now is 2.5 ABV. So that's that's literally a non-alcoholic beer, right? I mean, yeah. pretty darn close. And I don't know. I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, is, is it on this label? Yeah, it's on, it's on the bottom of the label. Oh, and I don't, that, that can is just as dark as the beer. I don't know if you can find the ABV on that or not. I, I can't even find I was looking for it earlier. Yeah, and this, this is ambient we, we, not uh, oh, not ambient. It's yeah, ambient. ambient, ambient like the sound. Gotcha. Uh, okay. All the various flavors are ambient. There you go. There you go. But the, we uh, we got a coffee shop vibes to drink. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually so this is like all taste, no alcohol. Yeah. We got a 
uh, a continuance, which is a barrel-aged strong ale, a blend of stouts, barley wines, and a quad, and a malt vin, which is a barley wine. I'm kind of... How do you get something this, like with that sour and that much ale taste without having had any freaking fermentation to create alcohol? Be a really good brewery. Those guys are good. I mean, you saw it. The comments on your Twitter dude, page yeah. were like, dude, you guys hit the, we, it was like you guys lit, hit the mother load. Yeah, people lit that one up. Um, th- there's a handful of some of these breweries that I want to drink more beer from, and now this is one of them. I mean, one of the others that I really, that I like that, I mean, we got sent it. I mean, it's another anesthesiologist sent it to us was Treehouse Brewing. They're like a Northeast. They're like Massachusetts, okay. Connecticut. But I I consistently talk to more and more people from the Northeast who say that's a big one. But yeah, you get some of these breweries that are not in this area. It's not the easiest stuff to get. But man, everybody who's had side project commented on it. So you know, Thanksgiving is this week. Is beer at the table for for Thanksgiving? For Thanksgiving, why would it not be? Well, because we we tend to do the wine on Thanksgiving. Do you? Yeah, we we're, we're probably more of a wine family yeah, than I mean, Thanksgiving. We'll do. I mean, we'll do anything. I just I'm not a big wine drinker. Yeah, you wouldn't last in this house because we go through. Uh, I mean, Owen now is a wine drinker. He's over here drinking every single week on the wine. I bet we go through. I bet we go through almost a case of wine a week, twelve bottles. That's a lot of vino. You guys have a problem. Yeah, you like think so? I, like when I'm sitting here, like me. Yes, and I'm like, damn. Yeah. You yeah. guys drink a lot. And then, you know, in two weeks, I'm going to Italy, so I'm going to be drinking a lot of wine. you got to be ready for it, Yeah, though. yeah, I'm, I'm you prepping. you got to condition your yeah, liver. That's exactly what I'm doing. You don't want to go in out of shape, hey? It's like it's like football practice or wrestling practice. You don't use two-a-days to get in shape for the season. You get in shape for two-a-days. Oh, okay. That's I what you're it. doing now. You yeah. don't go to Italy to get your liver ready. You get no. your liver ready to go to Italy. See, that's a great way to look at it. Thank you for... Thank that you for, might be a t-shirt. That, that it, it might we be. We might need to think about that. So we need to... Ha- we'll, we'll get with our buddy Mike Draper in, uh, at Ray Gun and see yeah, if we, we can come, come up with that. we got to come up with something yeah. based off Speaking of that. Speaking of that, I don't have it with me, um, but we do have... Uh, fourth and one is why God created fullbacks t-shirts. Uh, we'll put the link in the YouTube description. We'll also put the link in the Podbean description. If you want to get one of those big, great stock, stocking stuffer for, for Christmas, again, fourth and one is why God created fullbacks. Uh, and you can also, uh, night and day difference is also a t-shirt that's up there. And the, 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 the original, the Sorry Dave t-shirt is also there. Speaking of Thanksgiving, I, you know this, this comes up a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't do the turkey. They like to do a ham or a roast beef. What do you, what do you want Thanksgiving? Yeah, we're kind of surfing turfing it. Surfing turfing it, really? Yeah, I'll probably get some kind of beef. Probably do like a pork tenderloin. And I thought you were we, American. You're not American. Why can't you celebrate like the pilgrims? I like red meat. Uh, so do I. But yeah, I, pilgrims I, are a bunch of freaking Brits. <laughs> Screw those guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm eating beef for Thanksgiving, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't care what meat it is. We, we traditionally have turkey. You know what I want? All I want are mashed potatoes. Just tons and tons yeah, and tons I think I'm of gonna mashed ask my potatoes. Mom. I think I'm going to ask my mom to make like the, you know, the shredded cheesy potatoes. See, I do the exact opposite. I don't put cheese in my potatoes. You know what I put? Butter and sauerkraut See, in my you know, potatoes. It's, oh, sauerkraut. Yeah. Man, I bet that'd be good because I love sauerkraut. But butter, you know what that is? Dairy. dairy. It's dairy. Yeah, and it's good. Any kind of dairy is good. I love my cheesy potatoes. I though. can't believe being the check boy that you are, you've never put sauerkraut in your mashed potatoes. I've done, so I've done like, uh, do you know what's really good? I mean, I've had like au gratin potatoes, I guess, that have like sauerkraut. Huh. In them. That was good. Cranberries, yes or no? Uh, Time and place. Sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. I hate them. Hate them. Stuffing, yes or no? Yes. Okay. My wife makes just a killer sausage stuffing. It's amazing. Sausage stuffing? Yeah, it does like a whole bunch of like pork sausage in it. Oh, it's so good. Do you know what's good? Adding adding swine to your carbs. That's that's freaking money right there, dude. Dude, have you ever sat there and thought, I'm going to add sausage to this or I'm going to add bacon to this and had it not be better? Uh, no, I don't think I I have. Come up with something that you can't add bacon to and make it better. But yeah, it, yeah, she does. It's this sauce. It's this 
like pork sausage stuffing that's just amazing. Oh, and does it's my, a meal in and of itself. Does your mother make anything you like? Are you? Uh, what, do we do anything traditionally on Thanksgiving? I'm just trying to think. Uh, mom makes stuffing. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. I like it. Uh, every, anything they make, I like. See. Yeah, I mean, but it, so I mean, I'm probably gonna like grill grill some red meats, and then we had a friend who got us a bunch of uh, golf shrimp. From from the te- they were down in Texas, got a bunch of Gulf Coast shrimp that they brought up. So we're going to grill that up. That's uh, going to be money. See, dude. Owen's going to try to change your mind because, um, and I'm I I've, I I got to taste some tuna last week on this, but he just got himself a Blackstone. Okay. Oh, I, okay. You don't have to convince me on the Blackstone. I want one. See, you, you did steak really well. Yeah, we we did uh well, and you were saying the tuna steaks too. We were doing yeah. those tuna steaks, and then uh, on Thursday I did, I did uh some New York strips I got at Costco, and uh, man, I they turned out great. I was I was kind of surprised, but it was it was really good. Yeah, the uh, for the for the tuna steaks because I love seared tuna. Leave it just like completely raw in the yeah. middle. Oh God, that's that's great. But yeah, like a Blackstone or some kind of griddle grill is perfect for that. See, I I got too much stuff in my backyard though. I got a full yeah, grill. I do too. I've I got just, the Traeger. Yeah, I, so I, I mean, I don't think I actually want an actual Blackstone. So I've got a kind of a I, I just got a big old Weber gas grill. Yeah, but they make like griddle inserts. So that's actually what I need. Is, oh. Is I need to just go get one of those Weber griddle inserts because it's the grill's big enough. It's got like three grill insets. Yeah, just take one of those out and put the griddle insert in it. I make that makes perfect sense. That yeah. way you don't have to buy the the Blackstone because exactly. you're getting the same you're getting the same thing anyway, right? Exactly. Okay, that, that makes I mean, a I lot might. Of sense. The only thing I could think about with the Blackstone would be so I've got a I've got kind of one of those Coleman tailgate grills, and it's kind of the nicer, bigger one. But I've had it for probably ten years now. It's still great. It's still in good shape, but at some point that thing's going to burn out. And when it does, at, at whatever point it does, I'm going to get like the tailgate size yeah. uh, Blackstone as the replacement. I think. By the way, if I forget, because uh, we're probably going to be talking for another you know hour or so about ha- Blackstone, about Blackstone, yes, uh, <laughs> and ha- beer. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I know it, it, the holidays are here; they can be tough for some people. Um, but happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody has a, a, a happy day, and uh, eat, you get to eat really, really well. Uh, the Huskers go to Wisconsin. Another close game, another loss, and this one seems to bother you. It seemed more than most, Rob. You, you you've been pretty. Hey, I, I, your, your grades, I thought, were pretty harsh. Um, Which you know, because I had a lot of people were like, "Oh yeah, the, they were way worse than the grades you gave." You like graded on the on the nice end of the curve on this. Really, one. I. I, that was most of the commentary huh. I got. Which I mean, and some of it was on. I think I gave the defense a B plus. Which, if you went in and looked, I mean, the defense did. If you look at the stats, if you you look at the yardage, they held Wisconsin to to a yardage and point level that I looked at and thought this should have been good enough to win if the offense and the special teams did just good enough to win. And offense and special teams did not do good enough to win. So let, let's start with not good enough to win because Nebraska had the ball back. Last drive uh, needed um, – could have gone for the win. Instead played for the tie, and which is almost contradictory to what it did last week when it tried to – Go for the uh, uh, go for the win, and had to kick a field goal to uh, to keep it going. And so let let's uh, uh, let's hear what Matt Rule had to say about the the last drive and his philosophy uh, behind it. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that uh, we got into field goal range first. You know what I mean? I wanted to make sure that um, um, we had a chance to to get down. We were going to take one shot at the end zone. You know, kind of a Ken to last week, you know, I, I felt good about the kick. I wanted to make sure he got in, in range to make the kick, give him a chance to give him a chance to take a shot at the end zone and go cool from there. So, um, looking back, maybe maybe would have, should have called that earlier. So maybe we had two shots at the end zone. But uh, you know, I know a lot of a lot of people ask me why I didn't just run the ball last week and kick it last week. So, you know, um, I thought we had a good play there. 
uh, Billy, uh, he gave Billy a chance, kind of the same thing we did before the first half, and then um, kicked it. So you know, we got big, ran the ball because we wanted to make sure that we wanted to make sure that um, we were within within range, and then got the first down. Um, but uh, that, that was really kind of the thought process. Need to correct myself because Nebraska turned the ball over last week against Maryland. They didn't kick it uh, because they were going for the touchdown. Here they had three timeouts left, Rob. Lots of time and chose just to play fairly conservative and, and go for the tie and go to overtime. Well, and that was the thing. I I, I made a I, I put a tweet out there, and a lot of people commented on, okay, it's a totally different situation. And it is. I mean, it is different from last week. And, and the comment I had on Twitter, which was essentially last week, everybody was like, yeah, you should have run it three times and then kicked it this week. It's we sh- we we ran it three times and kicked it and we shouldn't have I, I mean it's it was and every and i i made the point on twitter i made the point yeah listen i get it it's apples and oranges situationally and i do understand that i just thought it was kind of an interesting thought process by the coaching staff in both situations and i probably would have liked to have seen them do the opposite in both situations, there's always a little bit of information, knowledge, and decision-making process that happens behind the scenes on the part of these coaches that we don't know about and may never know about. And so I, I get that as well, too, that maybe there's some reasons they did decide to do the things the way they did it. But... Okay, well, I, I, let me try to explain it in, in simple terms in my, my small brain compared to your very large brain, is that last week... Uh, you're tied, all you need is a field goal to win, right? I mean, that's why you run the clock down, kick the field goal, don't go for the win because you've been a turnover machine. Here, you need the field goal to tie to get to overtime, and you're thinking if you go for it, are those turnovers going to rear their, their 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 ugly heads again? So I, I I'm with you. Reverse it because yeah. the two situations are different. The, the turnover fear has to be present though in Absolutely. the in the minds of these coaches. And sometimes it's players get into their own heads a lot. You look at kickers. You look at quarterbacks. That gets into their heads, and then they start worrying about it. Then they play tight. Then they do turn the ball over. So I, they got to worry about that a little bit. Um. I, the biggest question I had was the clock management side of it because you do have three turn. Or I'm sorry, three timeouts. Uh, and God, even my wife even made the comment, at one, and I think it was actually in reference to an earlier game during the season in, in regards to like, why didn't they just call a timeout there? Let everybody catch their breath. That you've got more time at least to deal with maybe run a couple of extra plays because of it. Her comment was that there's no points awarded for having timeouts remaining True. after a game. Use them. And I just, my thought, I just, I, I didn't understand that at the end of regulation. Why, but you know, you're actually moving the ball on the ground fairly well. I get it. You want to play conservative. You want to keep the ball on the ground but there's not there really isn't enough time for Wisconsin to make a big play and go the length of the field. I could see Maryland doing that. Don't get me wrong. Maryland did have the capability to do it. They only did it on one series versus Nebraska. But they're but built Maryland, for it. Wisconsin's not built for that. No, they just aren't built for that. Maryland had the guys, you want to have a two-play 80-yard drive? Maryland can do it. That's not Wisconsin. So I think that argument goes throws out the window. So, yeah, just keep the ball on the ground. After two of those runs they had, call a timeout. You're going to be able to squeeze in a couple more plays. You're still going to get into field goal range, and you're still going to have the opportunity to probably take at least two shots at the end zone. And as somebody asked me on Twitter today as well, too, yeah, don't throw a fade pass to Billy Kemp. Throw the fade pass to Malachi Coleman. Um, the, the surprise maybe on Saturday, or maybe it wasn't a surprise, but Chubba Purdy made his first start at quarterback and you know what? I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I thought it was the best quarterback play that Nebraska's had all year. Yes. I, I totally agree. Now, I mean, there, there's been times that Heinrich had some really good, had some nice runs, a couple of nice pass completions. Hell, Jeff Sims... There's a couple of passes Jeff Sims had early this year that were outstanding. 
I mean, it's not like those guys are completely inept. Yeah. I'm talking but, from a total package. But though. from a total package standpoint, yes, I totally agree. And the thing that's interesting to me, and again, I don't know the full story. I don't know how many reps Chubba got in practice last year. I don't know Chubba's injury situation last year, let alone the better part of this season. Um but when Chubba played last year, there was a couple of times they had him for large chunks out there playing last year. He did not look good. I did not think he looked like a very good quarterback. This was the most extensive action we've seen from him. And I agree. And I'm sitting here going like, God, why haven't we seen this earlier? And I get the whole injury thing. And he's kind of maybe finally healed up a bit. But, I mean, you look at that touchdown run he had on that on that scramble – Damn, that does not look like a guy who's been battling a groin injury all season. Well, and, and that's a good point because uh, this is coming out on Sunday, but if you subscribe to the YouTube channel or go to our YouTube channel, Monday morning uh, there is going to be a doc's diagnosis on Chubba's touchdown run. And you can see right at the point, he turns on the afterburners, man. Dude. And he, we haven't seen that in a long, long time. You said it was uh, the fastest <laughs> since a guy named Martinez. Yeah, it's like f- fastest quarterback we've seen not named Martinez. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, Matt Rule talked a little bit about Chubb's performance. And what he said at the end is 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 interesting. So listen to the whole thing, but pay, pay particular attention to the end of it. I thought Chubb played really well, um, you know. One play along the sideline where, you know, maybe it was an interception, the ball went out of bounds, but I thought he protected the football. I thought he pulled the da- ball down when they went to run. Um, you know, they've, uh, I, thought, I thought he converted third downs. I thought he was hot in the first half. He thought he ran the football. You know, we didn't call a lot of designed quarterback runs or anything like that, but he, um, he was uh, doing a nice job, in my opinion, of just, if it wasn't there, pulling the ball down and going. So, um, you know, obviously we hit a little bit of a lull there at the beginning of the second half. Um, that's, you know, kind of watching them. That's kind of what they've done to people. And, um, um, but found a way at the end to go make some plays. So for his first start for us, you know, this year, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was really something to build on. Something, something to, to build, build on. on. So my question to you is Chubba Purdy the quarterback of the future for Nebraska? Only a sophomore, 22 years old. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to give you a great big maybe there, but it's, the more I think about this, because I know a lot of people have talked, dude, and I have too. Like, what's your portal wish list? Three O linemen and two quarterbacks. Okay, God, good old linemen are hard to find in the portal. Yes, they just don't move around much. Because you know what, good old if if you're a good old, old lineman and you're going to get in the portal, unless you're where are you going to go? You're going to the National Football League if you're a good old lineman, right? Yeah. And if you're a junior Which, above, I mean, think about some of these guys. I mean, I'm thinking about oh. I'm blanking on their names, but I mean, you had guys like, was it uh, a couple of guys that Northern Iowa has put out over the last couple of years? One of them starting at right tackle for the Bills. But he actually stayed at Northern Iowa. He made the commitment not That's to That's my point, yeah. is those guys, there's they don't need to leave. They're killing it at that level. They're going to the NFL. Um, North Dakota State had the big kid, came in as a tight end and just developed and turned into a huge old lineman for the Bison. He was, I think, a second-round pick this year. Uh, there's a lot of really, really good guys who've come out of the D2 and FCS level and are playing O-line in the NFL right now. Those guys either, A, they don't transfer, or if they do, they go to Michigan or Alabama or Georgia. They, they I mean, they're going where they're gunning for a, for a Power 5 national title and monstrous amounts of NIL money. There, it's hard to get good old linemen through the portal. Now, here's the other thing. It's hard to get a good quarterback through the portal. And the reason is, it, it's easy with the portal to look at the situation and just say, hey, let you, well, dude, just go get a good quarterback through the portal. There's not a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Well, and here's what's going to start happening, right? Is that how do you know what a good quarterback is? Because and if you're that good, that team's NIL is probably going to use the money to keep you there anyway. Yeah, and I mean, good quarterbacks tend to stay where they're at. Guess what? Michael Penix wasn't ever going to leave Washington. I mean, you, you look at what Bo Nix has done at Oregon. Um, but that's 
He started at Auburn, right? Yeah. So, Penix I mean, started it, at Indiana, though. Remember? Oh, did he really? Yeah, he started okay. at Indiana. Well, and those are guys who I think ended up in good coaching situations. And, and but, he got injured. It just, it just all worked out. Yeah, he started Indiana. And, I mean, and you can look at, like, I mean, the other one, um, you look at Burroughs. I mean, Lee's Ohio State goes to LSU. I, I mean, but that's going to be few and far between. And, and it world. is. And a lot of these guys, I mean, when Bo Nix was at Auburn, he was one of those guys. Yeah, he was a pretty good, solid quarterback, but. God, the Auburn faithful freaking hated him. Yes. They, he was not a favorite of the Auburn fans. And, I mean, again, in the situation with Joe Burrows, everybody talks about, like, oh, yeah, Nebraska didn't didn't offer him. Okay, Yeah, I get it. But guess what? When he left Ohio State, kind of the underlying current was, was like, well, he's probably a halfway decent quarterback, and, yeah, maybe LSU can do something with him. But the fact is, is that he was sitting at like third string at Ohio State. I mean, there's kind of this mindset of people where they look at a former three, four, five star kid who leaves a big power five school. Okay, there's a reason they didn't pan out where they were at. Now, sometimes they do. Sometimes, sometimes God lightning strikes and they end up in a great situation like Penix and Bo Nix or Burroughs. But, God, those are few and far in between. I mean, the usual thing that happens is you take a gamble and you go get a Jeff Sims. Or Casey Thompson makes a gamble and leaves and goes to – I mean, what if Casey Thompson stayed? It's a million-dollar question, but, if he's, but you can't play that game. And you'll go crazy. I, oh, no, I get it. I'm just saying if Casey Thompson stays in, stays in Lincoln – and stays healthy, and that's kind of a key thing, by the way. But if he stays in Lincoln and stays healthy, he's our starting quarterback probably third game on. I would agree with you on that. At least maybe even second game onward. All of a sudden, and so it's, I mean, God, you don't know how this stuff's going to pan out. But I mean, dude, Casey made a gamble. He, he, now, and I think Rule told him, hey, you're probably not going to be the starter here. If you want to hit the portal, hit the portal, but you're not going to be the guy that starts the season. Well, he he goes, was it Florida Atlantic or is it FIU? He went to Florida Atlantic, then he so, blew out his ACL. Yeah, which again, the, the the ACL thing in my mind is a here nor there. You don't know if that's going to happen. Might not have happened if he might have blown his knee, might not have blown his knee had he stayed. But it, he went there, he got, he was up and down there. He didn't have Trey Palmer. So it's, those are gambles. Most quarterback uh, transfer portal moves are going to be a bit of a gamble. They just are. You know, it w- l- let's look at Chubb's numbers. 14 carries yesterday, uh, net 105 yards, the longest with that 55 yard touchdown run. Passing, this is why I, surprised, I was surprised you gave the passing game a C minus because he was 15 to 23. The one pick was the last play in overtime. So I don't know, and I don't, I wasn't counting that pick against. Yeah, him. and I don't think because even Matt Rule in his press conference, he said we didn't have any turnovers. They're like, well, the last play, and he's like, yeah. whatever. I mean, that, that, I mean, think about it. Nebraska didn't turn the ball over. No fumbles, no interceptions. I get it, and that was great. It makes a difference. Yeah. Um, but so they the, still lost because everybody's like, well, if you just don't turn the ball yeah. over, you're going to win football games. There were some passes in some clutch situations where he didn't have a completion that I, I thought he should have made. He just, and that's time with his receivers that he doesn't have. In terms of seeing those guys in a game setting, game speed with a pass rush in his face. That that you got to have just that time on the field, and if you don't have it, some of those throws aren't going to be well, there. But that's an experience thing. Well, and let me ask you this: because up until this week, really didn't take reps with the number one, right? And one week of practice with the number ones isn't going to get you up to speed. With it's anybody. not, and that's and, and that. So I, I kind of I get that. Um, the other thing that it, when I when I'm doing my passing grades. I do count the offensive lines pass blocking okay. in with the passing grade. I, I think that's confusing to a and lot of I, people. And I think the rush – the, the O-line did okay. It was far from great. But I th- there was a couple of times there I, I thought they should have had the pass rush not in his face, and it was. Um, you gave the special teams uh, some low grades, and rightfully so. Uh, just running through it, you know, punting five punts, a 35.2 yard average, just one inside the 20. We need an upgrade there. Tristan Alvano with another missed field goal. 
You're gonna. I, I know I, what happens. I'm still a believer there with him. Um, I I actually think he's. I, I still think he's going to be a rock star. I think he is a rock star. Uh, I think he's the best kicker on the roster, and I don't think they're going to find somebody in the portal better than Alvano because he's very good. The the punting situation, we need an upgrade. Now, here's the thing. If you've ever been on a team with a really good punter, and I've been on teams with some really good punters. Darren Erstad was a great punter. Darren Erstad was an NFL caliber punter. Uh, if you've got a very good punter, you realize how much of a defensive weapon they are. I like that beer, by the way. That oh my is amazing. God. Um, the, uh, but yeah, a good punter is an absolute weapon. The number of field flips we had with Erstad was mind blowing. Mike Stiggy was a really good punter. Jesse Cush was a really good punter. Byron Bennett for one year was our starting punter. Everybody remembers him as the kicker, but he was he was an amazing punter. And so though those guys are, like I said, they're freaking weapons. If you've got a good punter, you can't underestimate that. And if you don't have one, you just don't realize how much of a weapon a good punter can be. We're going to get into it in uh, in a little bit with the Iowa game, but you know Iowa fans have a shirt that say "Punting is winning" because Tory Taylor is one of the best punters in the country. And he's going pro. And he's, I mean, think about that. He he could come back for another year. He's like, I'm a punter and I'm going to go pro. Yeah. I, I mean, that doesn't happen that often. Not a lot. So not a lot. Yeah. But uh, anything else about the special teams that just drove you nuts? The punny is, and that's the thing. I mean, grading special teams. Single plays play into it. And, I mean, the punting consistently just wasn't there. The missed field goal plays into that stuff. I mean, that's you miss one field goal when you really could use three points. Yeah, that counts against you. Yeah. That, that costs games. A blocked extra point, and I know that didn't happen, well, but, think about but it, that you, can cost a game. You miss a field goal, you would – you're in a lot better situation if you make the field goal, then you're playing for a win at the end. Yes, 100%. Then it's the exact same situation yes. as last week, and it does turn into this, all right, let's run the ball three times, burn clock, and we're just going to kick the field goal. So it, yeah, it's that's a game changer. So that missed field goal, yeah, that really counts against you in a grade in a game like that. Uh, don't forget that uh, Fred, and we mean bet Fred, is your guy when you want to bet. Now get the no sweat first bet bonus. Your first qualifying bet of $20 or more will be matched with a Fred bet up to $105. If it loses, use the promo code RUSH. Uh, basketball season is back and better than ever thanks to bet Fred's new Trey Day promo. Every week, one lucky Wednesday or one lucky Wednesday game will be selected as the Trey Day game of the week where you could get a Fred bet for every three-pointer made by the top scorer. Terms and conditions do apply. Must be 21+. plus. Wagers only accepted in the states where Betfred is doing business. You can find all those at BetfredSports.com. And if you do have a gambling problem, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Connor Orr at Orrin Horgan. He's a good dude. He's, he was texting us last week, uh, had some questions for us. Connor is a friend of the podcast, a licensed sports agent, and a litigator in the state of Nebraska. He works directly with athletes and businesses to help them navigate the ever-changing landscape of name, image, and likeness. Connor is also fo focused on corporate and personal injury litigations in both Nebraska and Iowa. He can work with you on your business planning, estate planning, and real estate transactions. Call Connor today at 402 408 648 how about Husker Hounds? All Adidas sideline gear is 25% off through the month of November, so time is running out. Uh, Antigua quarter zips for men, regularly $95 on sale for $59.99. And Christmas ornaments and Christmas tree socks, all 20% off through November. Two locations in the Omaha area, the Superstore at 84th and Center and out west at 171st and Lakeside Hills Plaza. Or you can make it easy on yourself and shop huskerhounds.com where you get free shipping on orders over $50 and a flat shipping rate of $4.95 on any Anything under fifty dollars. Uh, up next, Rob, because I was or Nebraska sitting at five and six, one game to become bowl eligible. Iowa comes to Memorial Stadium as the Big Ten West Division champions. They're already in the Big Ten champions. title game. Hang a batter. Well, they probably will in Iowa City, but uh, it's been an interesting year. You and I haven't had much ribbing this year between both <laughs> schools because I, I listen. 
I, I host the Iowa Hawkeye call in post, post game show. You guys know my, my my affection for Iowa. They're nine and two. How they're nine and two, I'm trying to figure out. But it's the exact opposite of Nebraska. What is it? Uh, uh, Matt Rule zero and four in one score games. Iowa's f- like, margin of victory. They're like they're like nine and zero in one it, score. It, games. It's absolutely crazy. The one score games. The only one they lost of a one score game was the Minnesota game, which. You could make an argument, you know, they got screwed in that. But but the, when they get in a close There's situation, a it, it technically. You, technically it was. Technically. I, I, I'm not going to dispute that. See, people, Travis hates Iowa. I he do agrees not. it was a good call. I do not. Uh, I think it was a shit call, but I guess if, you know, by the rule book, sure. I, I've even asked some officials. We know a guy. We know a guy, and they're like, yeah, wouldn't have called it. I mean, so it's just different. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Well, here's the thing: there is a difference between was it technically the correct call, and there is some subjectivity to officiating, and there is those. Yeah, I'm probably not calling it in that situation. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Te- yeah, now. Should he have called it? Yeah, no. Now I'm not going into the game. This- was it technically the correct call? Yeah. Yes. See, the problem there is I know I'm totally regressing to a few weeks ago, but the problem with that is because it went to review to see if he had stepped out, and they looked at it and discussed the fact that technically the correct call would be it's that illegal hand motion or whatever yeah. the call ended up being. However, I, I don't know the exact terminology, but if you want to look at it, that's the problem there is that it was one of these, you've got a group of officials off camera, off microphone, behind the scenes discussing this. When that goes to, like when the review goes to review by the Big Ten, the Big Ten officials are going to look at the officiating crew who was doing the review and saying, hey, the technical rule but call here should have been to see that there was, in fact, an illegal hand motion, and that's what should have been called. Those guys are going to get docked if they don't call it. Yeah, because at that point, you have to do the right thing. They did not call it in the course of the game. So when you say, like, yeah, we talked to an official, and he was like, yeah, I I wouldn't have called that. Guess what? Those officials in the course of the game didn't call it. It was a review booth call. Um, Sorry, I totally went on a tangent there. but Nebraska, yeah, Iowa's won 18 of its last 19 games in November, which is impressive, right? Yes. That only loss was to Nebraska a year ago. The, the reason I'm not optimistic as an Iowa fan is uh, the quarterback for Illinois, the Paddock kid, did a really good job yesterday. And I look at Ch- and I looked at Chubba Purdy going, okay, if he's healthy, because he said even after the game, trainers would have to take a look at it. He might be feeling it in the morning. He's got some groin stuff that he has to deal with. But if Chubba plays like he did against Wisconsin, I think that gives the Iowa defense some fits. It creates a completely different – because Iowa's never dealt well – with a mobile quarterback, it has. It if has you've it. got somebody who can run, Chubb is healthy and can do what he did against Wisconsin, at least in that first yeah. quarter, that's a difference maker. I I still go back to the fact that you don't have a Trey Palmer on the team right now. Now, do we have guys who have blazing speed, dude? That touchdown by Jalen Lloyd. Oh yeah, damn. But Coleman has speed. Speed kills. Coleman has, exactly. Coleman, yeah. Now, we, got, we got to watch Jalen Lloyd go head to head with Coleman in a lot of track meets in the state of Nebraska, and Jalen usually has Coleman's number. But I mean, you, you're talking about you're talking about guys that I mean, this is a difference between like a four one eight forty and a four one six five forty. I'm going to be honest with you. I I have changed. If Harburg was still the quarterback, or even Jeff Sims, I feel a lot better about Iowa winning the game. Chubba changes my perspective. So on here's this. my question: Is it a turnover thing? Or it's a is turnover it, or is thing. It a skill set it's thing. A, it, well, both. I think. It, I think it, because I think Chubb is a better passer than yes. Heinrich. I think he's. Oh, he's an, a better he, passer than anybody else we've yeah. seen this year. And he's an equal runner to Sims. I think he's a better runner than than Harburg because he's got the Jets. We saw it. He, he yeah. he's got Although, a different gear, man. 
So here's the difference with Chubba that I saw in that Wisconsin game that I have not seen from Harburg or Sims. Because both Harburg and Sims, they can fly. You don't get 70-yard touchdown runs against Colorado and outrun Travis Hunter like Sims did. Um, Harburg as well, too, against several of those games where he's had some big touchdown runs. I haven't seen somebody hit that high gear in an instant. That touchdown run that, that that Chubba had. You can see it. Oh, my God. It's just he he does like – he plants his foot, boom. Yeah. You can see it on the screen in real time. It's just like, ooh, that's impressive. That, that zero to 60 in an instant capability, not a lot of guys have that, and I agree. That's one thing he's got over Sims and Harbor. So that's where my confidence level has gone down a little bit. Now, my confidence comes up because even without Cooper DeGene and – Listen, I hate it when great players from any team get hurt. That that was a significant loss. Dude, what what was the injury? Uh, he has a oh, cast. They, they, okay, he has a cast ca- below the knee uh, over his, so it goes over his foot and up through uh, up over his cast. Well, what's the injury? They, they're not. They're just saying a lower leg injury. And that's I, all I've heard. I didn't. Know I think it was he broke. This. I think he probably broke an ankle or broke a. Is it, what, what is it? The femur down below, or is it? What, what is it below now, the knee? I'm going with. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with a uh, a distal fibula fracture. Uh, what? Or like a the, the other term would be a lateral malleolar fracture. Well, they said he'd be. He wouldn't really be available until after in, into January. So it, it, is that a long? What, what, what? Yeah. So I mean that. I mean, yeah, six weeks, eight weeks. Okay. So he's out for the rest of the season. That's a tough loss because he yeah he's what, really good he's Spare, really good and he's fun unless, to watch unless he's making illegal hand motions and helping Minnesota <laughs> out. So how about this? The early over under on this the the uh, the point total twenty seven and a half. So what people need to get ready for if you haven't watched a lot of Iowa football, I have. Um, he plays a chess game. Get ready for a chess game. If no turnovers happen in this game. It's going to be flip the field, flip the field, flip the field. That's that, where punting comes in huge. It, Iowa lives off punting. It does, and that's where I worry because last year you had two things happen. Iowa turned the ball over. How many turnovers did they have last year? I have to year? go back. I think three or four. God, yeah, it was a bunch. I think th- I thought Iowa had five, but I thought like the, like the net because I thought Nebraska ended up with a couple of turnovers as well that – kind of righted that ship a little bit but a couple of things you had those Iowa turnovers and then you had Trey Palmer yeah so the turnovers are a gamble if Iowa doesn't turn it over Nebraska is going to have some issues we don't have Trey Palmer I'm worried the, the, like like I said, I've talked about this before. This is the barest I've ever seen the cupboard down in Lincoln in, in terms of overall talent. And, and I say that, and I'm also referencing the fact that you've got these injuries. Harburg's beat up. You've lost three or four running backs. You've lost two or three wide receivers. You've lost half the offensive line. This is not a healthy team, and it wasn't that good to begin with. And so that worries me a lot when last year we did have those turnovers. We did have Trey Palmer. We don't have that now. This is this is going to be a little bit of a different dynamic. And I think people are like, oh, yeah, we just got to do what we did to Iowa last year. I'm like, okay, well, we're not going to be able to because we don't have Trey Palmer. And we, we – I mean, we really need Padilla or uh, Petrus back there at quarterback. Padilla. And we don't... You have Deacon Hill, who is uh, 258 pounds. He actually had a decent run yesterday. That dude's against a Illinois. tight end. That's going to be another yeah. Zach Miller. He's going to get drafted, go to the NFL, and they're going to turn him into a tight end. Now, And everybody's going to be like, God damn it, look, Iowa's got another tight end in the NFL. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, Except he was a quarterback. Uh, and Strang is a pretty decent tight end. Uh, Pascuzzi's not bad. It, but it, it's just going to be a boring football game. Get ready for – I mean, just get ready for a really boring, low-scoring football game. And it, I, I'd like to try to predict a winner. I, early in the year, I actually said Nebraska was going to beat Iowa. I'm not convinced of that now. I was 9-2. and two, Nebraska's 5-6. and six, But there's really not that much difference between the two teams because the, the Big well, Ten West is just yeah. that fucking bad. And again, there hasn't been much difference between these teams all year, no. whether it's – Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Purdue's pretty bad. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll give it to them. They're pretty bad. Uh, Northwestern. I mean, Nebraska beat Northwestern. But, Iowa beat Northwestern. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's just it's yeah, it's all of these teams. There and that well, and that's the thing. I mean, for Nebraska, you looked at their schedule. Once you got past the first few games, it was one of those. Okay, we're going to lose to Michigan, but outside of that. It's it is one hundred. I was going to say it's hundred percent fifty fifty. It it is a fifty fifty proposition every week. And I was in that same boat. Now the difference is, it's kind of like what you said. God, this is Iowa's wheelhouse. It is. They love that shit. I don't even know if they love it. They're just that's where they live, and they're good at it. They don't get phased by it. They're they are comfortable with a game being tied halfway through the fourth quarter, and and when I say the game being tied, usually it's like a ten ten or thirteen thirteen game. I mean they just hell at, at one point yesterday I thought they were actually going to hit the over. They didn't. Uh, but it, <laughs> but but now Rob, I'd like your opinion on this because you and I are probably going to differ here. I think this rivalry is is blossoming into exactly what I wanted it to be when Nebraska joined the Big Ten. And Boring the truth, football? Well, no. There's there's hatred between the two. There really is. Yeah. And, and Iowa, whether you like it or not, is in Nebraska fans' head. They are. And, and, and the, I only say that because Scotty from Husker Hounds, God bless him, good sponsor, he's got all this beat Iowa shit. You don't see that with really any other team. They've no. loaded it up. They're inside people's heads. They, yeah, they, they want, I'll give you that. They, they, this has become, I think, what we like about college football. We the, like the border war here, and it's developing into the a win good o- rivalry. The win over Iowa last year, I, I mean, think, it, 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 God, this seems like it was a 1,000 years ago. It does, doesn't but it? But do you remember there was like this absolutely beautiful – I don't know what it was, a few days to a week or so after the Iowa game last year where we're sitting here going, well, shit, maybe Mickey Joseph gets a chance yeah. at the coaching job and this and then, and then all of that blew up. All of that came out of the end of the season and the win over Iowa. Yeah. There, there was kind of like this absolutely beautiful – level of like optimism or okay well scott's gone and you know what that's probably an okay thing it was a painful move but we finally made it we're moving forward and we beat iowa it was like a sense of relief it was it was great now i took it personal but but you know but then i look back and go i don't know why as a north northern iowa panther fan stop it i am a northern iowa panther fan because mark farley's a good dude uh but uh, why do you hate kirk ferentz i don't hate kirk ferentz Anyway, Not a big Brian the, Ferentz fan, but he's gone. Damn. How about this? How about this? After he got fired, he has not wore a logoed gear on the sideline. Yet. Only a black polo with or black hoodie with no logo on it. Every other I'm coach. I'm a little surprised they actually would allow him to do that. So yeah, am the, I. But you know what? Your time. dad's a head coach. Yeah. At this point, it's not worth. Yeah, it's not like they can. What are they going to do? Fire, fire you? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other time I thought about that a couple of years ago, uh, Stanford dropped wrestling. And in their last season, one of their wrestlers made it to the national finals and wrestled for the national title. Without Stanford gear in on? In an all-black singlet with no logo on it. And then they got the wrestling program and back he, because people stepped up with money. Well, and he did, but this guy, he ended up winning the national title, and he was one of kind of the sort of the the bell cows for bring Stanford wrestling back. But, I mean, I, I remember him going out there and watching the national finals and watching him win the national title, technically as a Stanford wrestler in this completely logoless singlet. It was kind of bad. And then he transferred. So, um. By the way, I sent you a tweet. I don't, you never responded to it. You see that uh, Wyoming tweet I sent you? Where they, oh, I commented on oh, it. Oh, I didn't see that. I mean, Wyoming wrestled in a barn. That was the okay. fucking coolest thing and I've seen handful, in a long time. Yeah, and a handful of people sent me that. I know our, 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 our guy, Cody. So Cody Mainquist, who he phones in, he tweets it, he comments on, on any time we do a YouTube live, he does. But Cody's a huge wrestling guy. Um Cody runs the it's the any wrestle uh Twitter page. Okay. Anyway, um great guy. He's responsible for a lot of the high school rankings here in Nebraska. He sent it to me and he knows a lot of these coaches personally and, and communicates them with them consistently. 
Thought that was freaking great, though. But it's, and he was wearing chaps. <laughs> chaps, hat, cowboy boot, you hat. Name it. He had, he had, and the, had to walk around like the the cow pins or the or the horse pins to get, to go talk to the official. Well, he did, and he's got to avoid the mat because I'm pretty sure he had spurs on would have chewed up the mat. But listen, wrestling coaches and wrestlers are they're a different breed. That was it, awesome. This has though. nothing to do with Nebraska, but it has something to well, do with, but with Iowa. If you guys go back, if you can search it, look up because uh, a lot of people have been focused on the gambling situation with Iowa and Iowa State. Oh my God! Go Iowa watch. Re- go watch Tom Brand's press conference and Kevin Dresser's press conference, and you'll go. Oh, why don't more coaches speak like that? Because they yeah. did not hold back whatsoever. Yeah, well, and God, Iowa lost three guys off their wrestling team, and they were all national title contenders. Yes, yeah, it I was mean, all top five in the nation. Caliber. I mean, guys. Look, look at Iowa. Iowa lost Noah Shannon, who's an NFL player. Who yeah, he made a thirty dollar bet on a women's basketball game. A thirty dollar bet on a women's basketball game. I get it. Hey, and here's the thing: Does the punishment fit the crime? No, no. But, but I, guess what? You broke the rule. All the and all these guys knew yes. the rule. This is why I, I this is why but, I have to talk fans off a ledge because I said, do I disagree with the punishment? Yes. No. But, oh, no. 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 Yeah, I disagree with the, the punishment. punishment but but you, when it, you know the rule going in, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, it's hard to argue against it. it. it, it and, really, and in this really case, is. do I agree? Do I even agree with the rule? No. Well. Listen, I guess I understand there's the whole thing about, okay, you're an athlete at a school. If it's a different sport at your school, you're going to have a little insight. Because guess what? When I was at Nebraska, we're at the training table with the volleyball team, the women's basketball team, the wrestling team, the baseball team. The, we're drinking beers I, with the softball players. It's not like we don't know the ins and outs it, and inside information on the status of those players. And so I get it why that rule's in place. The, uh, but to me, the, the, the big no-no is don't bet on your own team. That to me, that if you can't bet on your own and that's team. The, that's the, so there's two. There, there's, I, and I understand levels, and I understand yeah. layers. You don't bet on your own team. You shouldn't, and I and I think the other thing is is you, you can't bet on your own sport, that, and that's fair because you you know things about those teams exactly, that, yeah. and you can't bet on, and, and this is where most of these guys got in in trouble. Women's fucking basketball, but you can't bet on the on a on another sport, but it's a team from your school. Again, is that like maybe a second or third level or that, second or third level? To me, that's layer? like a two-game suspension if you I do that. I get it. Yeah, the punishment's bullshit. But, uh, but yeah, the, the, the fact is you know that. We got grilled on that big time. And that was 30 freaking years ago not to do that shit. And here's the thing. And now it wasn't it, legal back then. And now it's, what's that? And it wasn't legal back then. And I get it. And it's now legal it's legal now. Well, it is. But here's the other thing it's digital. Everything's digital. There is a digital fucking footprint for everything. Yep. I mean, there's, you, you can't get a, if you really want to commit a crime in this day and age, it's hard. Good it's luck. It's really hard. <laughs> You're I got 100% a, correct. I got a friend. They're 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 the assistant Douglas County prosecutor. Just casual conversations with them about stuff criminals do, and it's like, yeah, there's no way to get away with this stuff anymore. There's a digital footprint or a video camera on every. You're driving around like a 2015 or newer car. Guess what? They can track the location of it GPS-wise. Yeah. You're walking around with a GPS transmitter in your pocket every day. Got that Apple Watch on or that Garmin watch as you look at your wrist. It's right there. They're tracking you. It's a They're government conspiracy. You. Yeah, they didn't need to put microchips in a vaccine. We it, carry them around voluntarily. And AI is coming over. Coming, coming uh, is going to take over your life. I'm not even here. <laughs> I'm AI. <laughs> Rob Zadiska is not real. The real Rob Zadiska died two years ago in a car wreck. How long till uh, a robot does anesthesiology? Seriously. Yeah, that one's going to be tough. God, there's some 
there's some in the moment decisions you got to make. There is a li- there's a little. But if you train a robot everything. to think. Yeah, I suppose you could. And I think a lot of people think about that because you hear about robotic surgery. What it is, it's the robotic surgery is a surgeon using fine tuned micro instruments with a microscopic camera to do microsurgery. But there's a surgeon actually on the other end of that robot controlling all the movements of the robot. Well, you know so, what? Why, why do I feel better? I, I would rather have a, a surgeon with instruments and actually working on me than a surgeon running a, a, a game board council. Actually, the game board, <laughs> if, if, if the guy's well trained in it, that shit's like, talk about finesse. It's amazing what they can do. And the reason is because they can work on these little micro blood vessels, tiny nerve fibers, things like that. And it's stuff that you, you couldn't do even with the smoothest of hands. So that I get, I mean, you talk about the, 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 like a game console. I mean, think about gastroenterologists and getting a colonoscopy or an upper endoscope. That's like, that's all game board stuff. So when I got my colonoscopy last year, they just used like a, you know, an Atari, no, a, kid, a, a no, game boy sitting, to go up no, my ass. No, they're sitting there pretty well. <laughs> it, it kind of is actually. <laughs> But I mean, those fiber optic scopes, they, there were literally studies that they did on gastroenterologists and which ones played a lot of video games as a kid. And the guys who were kind of gamers growing up tended to have a better, tended to have a better skill set for the endoscopies. They oh, could control the equipment better. Oh, and there's a YouTube short, I think, right there. I, I, could, be, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I think there's a YouTube short right there. Oh, man. Are you a video game player? Not you know not much. I, I mean, my, my 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 son likes his video games, and I've been known to hop on on occasion. So man, you know, uh, we we haven't done this all year long, but it is Iowa, it's Nebraska. Rob and I have a a, a fun. You can see it behind us. We got the Hawkeye helmet. We got the Nebraska helmet. It's, he got the jawless Hawkeye. Yeah, light yeah up that's Owen's there. fault. He ordered it. He got ripped off. He didn't know he got ripped off. Uh, yet. Not my fault. No, that's... but <laughs> yeah, you, you, when you picked it up, you you forgot to go. Hey, dude, you forgot a beak. It works. <laughs> it's got half a beak. <laughs> All the Iowa fans that watch you watch you are like, dude, like you've no, got to fix this. It's like no lower lower jaw. It's just back there drooling away. It, it, the hawk had lip cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. That's not funny. You laughed. Yeah. <laughs> Wait long. What's what's the line? After enough time, tragedy all turns into comedy. <laughs> it does, no. doesn't it? Um, no. We we haven't done this all year, but it's we, it's our yearly uh, it's our yearly fun. Pick a winner. Uh, Iowa, or Nebraska. Nebraska score. Uh, I'm gonna say, let's say twenty. I'm gonna say twenty four fourteen. What I'd- fucking alternate universe are you living in? The. F- you think I was? Oh, you're saying Iowa doesn't score fourteen? I don't think Nebraska scores twenty four. Did last year? Uh, it's a better you- defense last year. I'm gonna go. Iowa had a better defense last year. I'm gonna go Iowa nine seven. There it is. Wow. <laughs> it's going to be a 16-point total. Yes. Iowa 9-7. You say 24-14, I say 9-7. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm predicting a scoring explosion. So you're predicting some turnovers then? Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, last week we we, we touched on it briefly. And you said Iowa 9-7. I said Iowa 9-7. You said I'm surprised Nebraska. you didn't say, you didn't throw out something there like uh, – like an like an eight to six. And by the way, it's three field goals. Yeah, like an eight. I was not scoring a touchdown. I was going to say eight to six or like eleven to nine. Let's have a, like have a couple safeties. They did get a in safety there. yesterday. I mean, that's how they won fifteen. I know 13. that's my point. It's like I was going to pick up. It's probably going to pick up a safety. I'll give them that. Let's do this. I'm going to say 24-16 they get, they get a safety. Okay, he goes 24-16, Nebraska. I go 9-7, Iowa. So there you go. We'll compare next week when we talk. Uh, last week, we hit upon it a little bit, and we didn't spend a lot of time on it. There was a political hit job that took place on Trev Alberts, and uh, an online Nebraska nonprofit newspaper uh, did a story about the how Trev Alberts mismanaged finances at UNO. First of all, uh, you need to know how to – operate a small non-profitable organization to learn how to uh, what, what that really looks like did you talk to any other comparable athletic departments to see how they move money around to pay for stuff well, because which it happens. Actually, which honestly 
running a even a mid major athletic department's like running a small Listen, country. I, I talked to Mark Farley, the head coach from you from Northern Iowa, every Thursday. If you knew what he did as a head coach to save money, he's doing stuff that like administrative assistants of, of administrative assistants do. Right? I mean, they do. There's just no money there. There's no money, and UNO is not a profitable athletic department. It never has been. Hockey is its biggest sport. You have to get creative in your finances. Well, and I've I, – okay, so we talk Augustana football yeah. a lot. They don't make any money up there. We hang out after the games. We're tailgating post game because why not? It is always kind of weirdly like 65 and sunny in Sioux Falls. I don't know. There's a, there's, It's like the negative of north central Iowa. <laughs> like north central Iowa, there's a weird weather vortex. It's always th- – like 29 degrees and overcast sioux falls is always like 60 and 70 Six, 60 and sunny or sunny and 70 whatever um it's always sunny in philadelphia pretty much but it's nice so it's always we're always, sunny in sioux falls we're, it's the show but we're yeah i know we're <laughs> we're always tailgating after the game and you're sitting there and it's interesting because you're in the parking lot right outside the stadium and after the game, I mean, you've got all this equipment on the sidelines. You got benches. You've got um, probably heaters and fans you got and heaters, all that. Shit. You got clipboards. You've got these big duffel bags filled with equipment. Sideline, which, which when you played, a grunt would pick that shit up. We're watching this, and I'm watching the D line coach and the D coordinator driving like the little. They got the big golf carts with the big bed. Yep. Like little mini pickup truck beds and back. Driving those back and forth between the stadium and the football storage facility, picking up and unloading all of this equipment after the game. And I'm sitting here just watching, and all I can think to myself, it's like there were interns to the assistant equipment manager's it was it, that that wasn't even stuff the equipment managers handled at Nebraska. It wasn't even the stuff the assistants to the equipment managers handled. I, that was the stuff the student interns handled. And I'm sitting here going like, "All right, the, I mean, it's like once you get past D1 or not even D1, Power Five, it changes. That, that money changes a lot, and having the personnel to do that kind of stuff changes a lot. And I remember hell when Lance Leipold, now the head coach at Kansas. Was was at UNO, and I don't know if it's still this way at Division Two or not. You'll have a better idea of this. Um, the head coach didn't have to teach class. Sister coaches had to teach. They still had to teach. He was doing like philosophy of football. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it, it's just the money, the way you run an athletic department. You can't compare Nebraska to UNO because it's not even close to being on the same universe. Yeah, it's I mean, not. It's not. Well, in a lot of these guys, it's kind of interesting because you, it's the equivalent of. Like back in the 1970s or 80s, even even in the 1980s, NFL football players would go get an off-season job. Yeah, because the money wasn't it wasn't the million dollars a year people think it was. So so, but I, yeah, so the the timing of that was I, I when that came out, I'm like, where is this coming from? And then it all made sense because somebody got wind of Trev getting a contract extension and a pay raise. That's what happened. So they did a political hit piece a week beforehand. A week later, Ted Carter, who's on his way out to Ohio State, rewards Trev, and this may be controversial, rightfully so, with a contract extension and doubled his pay because he deserves it, first of all. I really do believe that. And that's why the hit piece happened. But Nebraska is in a much better place right now. You may not think so with wins and losses. But from a culture standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, than it has been in a long, long time. So here's my question. We have some potential podcast guests. Should we have them sit down? God damn should, right should we, we have, should. Come, come sit down. This rarely happens. Dude, yeah, you don't stop we, in we, and we not may, sit down. We may not be set up for this. Owen may have to come adjust the camera. But NFL referee Cleet Blakeman is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Are you gonna, are you gonna oh, take? Hold we on. need another glass. Is what we need. <laughs> no, I'm good God, you smell good, yeah. dude. <laughs> Shower every now and then, Trav. 
Dude, we probably I, we just should start a little doing thank that. you off upstairs for you and your great job you did Friday night at our event. So we're we're, so. T- we're taking a back seat here. So l- let's back yeah, up. Yeah, I, I hate to interrupt. No, no, no. This is Andrew, cool. Face on the down. ballroom floor. Yeah, I know. I emceed his event the yeah. other night. I think I pissed him off though. <laughs> Because, Did he throw a flag at well, you no, or what? I, my opening joke, it was funny. It, it, I thought it was funny, but it, I think Cleet was mad at me because they had this program, right? And it looked like a fucking funeral program. <laughs> It did. It was the most bizarre thing. And it wasn't the quality of the photo. It was just, it was black and white. Your wife's even agreeing with me. So I get up there, I go, this is supposed to be a celebration. I go, look at this thing. It's a celebration of life. I, I mean, it's so, He's a dead man. He's a dead man. And so it was just one of those things. I'm sure there's some NFL fans that would like to think yeah, well, that yeah. about you. Yeah, I get that quite a bit, too. And, right? and, and so it, it just, we were all sitting at the table. I go, am I the only one that thinks that? They're like, no, we're so glad. Even Tom Walker, Tom Walker was like, yes, yes. And then and so then I started talking to people like, yeah, we, we think the same thing. I didn't know the photographer. It wasn't against the photo. It was just black and white. You had this cheesy ass smile on your face you're like is cleet dead is is is, is cleet gone and suddenly travis justice has never been invited back to mc right the nebraska yeah, press like, club the faces on the bar room that, floor yeah oh. exactly but i tell you what but, that was a great night dude it was, it was a fabulous night you were a big part of it and i want to again thank you oh. uh we left you a little present upstairs but anjanette before we left she goes you have to go down and say hello so <laughs> Yeah, it was especially Rob. Rob always needs a little help with Travis. He said, Dude, I need so much help. <laughs> you try, you know what? You try so hard. Well, you know what you have to do. You're gonna have to come. You, your podcast last year was it was, was a big hit. You're gonna have to come yeah. back after the season's over. I will What's definitely it? will. It's your Is off it? weekend. Is it weird not working? And you're not watching football right now, which blows my mind away. Yeah. I'll watch some of the later games tonight, but we had we had some things to do today, um, so it's kind of it's kind of nice to have a little break, kind of rest and uh, recover a little bit. And then we f- I finished seven weeks straight out from the re- regular season from here on. So. And then you got playoffs. And we got playoffs. Then you yeah. got uh, Super Bowl. It's going to be Cleet the Super Bowl this year, right? <laughs> if it's when up to, does if that it's get up to me or my wife, yeah. Uh, it's all. It literally is based upon evaluation and grades during the season. So that'll be that's games. still an ongoing process. Yes, then. yes, yes, okay. yes. So it's crazy. We're, ha- we're this is week eleven already. It just goes. I know. So fast. I mean, college but, is over. That, I mean, yeah. one more week and it's over. So that's good. So, so we're gonna put you on the spot. Uh, score of the Iowa Nebraska game. Come on, let's go. I would love. I, I'd love to see a 28-21 Husker That ain't victory. happening. He went 24-14. <laughs> I said 9-7. 9-7. Iowa kicks three field goals and wins the thing. We, you know, we watched last night again, and I'm like, it's just disappointing the last two weeks because they had opportunities. And yeah, they so, were definitely there. And you guys know that as well as I do, but I'm like, you just got to finish some things. Did you know Cleet's 2-0 and as a starter? And his numbers this year, I did this the other night at the Rose <laughs> yeah, Trout. <child. laughs> I, I brought out his, his career numbers. He'd be a hero. <laughs> he threw for 625 yards, seven touchdowns, and four picks. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be the next governor of Nebraska if, that was, if, if it was modern day. Dude, you're not a kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, so, we could anyway. definitely use that. Man. Well, thanks for but, stopping by. Absolutely, guys. Man, I'm sorry. If, if, if you pleasure. want to stick around, you can, but uh, I, know. You know, we're, I don't know how much longer we're going to go. Like, and Jeanette drives a hard bargain. She's like, I got a bottle of wine I can open. So, But we got to go. We got other things to do. So thanks, All right, fellas. brother. We'll Great see you later. You got a free weekend. Got to right. take advantage. That's the first time we've ever guys. had the impromptu... <laughs> The impromptu. See ya. Good seeing you. You're welcome. Uh, how about that? A, a, just an impromptu drop in by an NFL referee. Tra- Trans basement. It, dude, it's a big deal. <laughs> That's why, you know, I'm trying to convince some other people, like, I don't want to go to your basement. Can you? I go, no, the basement's the allure, right? I mean, Owen is cre- the visionary. Owen has created. Dude, Cleet Blakeman. Yes. Doug Ewald. Yes. Dave Remington. The entire pipeline yeah. has been in the basement. It's it's kind of, it's a thing. It really it's is. It's a thing. No, it's driving me nuts. Owen, have you noticed we forgot to put the Doc Talk logo up? Yeah, I saw that <laughs> earlier. I'm like, it, usually We're we have the, Do- the Roku logo. Well, in Todd Brandt from Z92's Todd and Tyler show. So this is really weird. I don't know if people can see it. So this Roku TV, those are all scenes from, and I didn't know this, but Todd Brandt from Z92 pointed out that those are all scenes from movies. So the, as it scrolls by, you'll see different movie scenes. Isn't that, that the, pop like, up. top of the, to like, the right of the volcano? Isn't that the castle from The Wizard of Oz? Yes, and then we believe the volcano is Joe versus the volcano. Okay, you got the robot there. I can't yeah. remember the movie, but I yeah. remember. Oh, you got the Empire State Building how, from King Kong. How much pot do you have to smoke, which Todd does? Oh, and there's the tower from uh, yes. Marvel's The Avengers. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I go to Todd, I go, how much pot okay, do you smoke? Okay, yeah, I'm like looking at this now. Now I just want to, <laughs> dude, I need another beer. Oh, there's Alcatraz, you The see? Rock. The Rock. And there, if it keeps going, and we're, I'm not going to have you look at it, but yeah, the, now, the, the clock dude. tower from Back to the Future is in this thing. Okay, now, I, oh, look. Stop the, it. Uh, Northern, Over here. Northern Lights from. Over here. Uh, Over here. Wait. No, isn't that uh, Rudolph? <laughs> this is I don't why, know. That, this is why you have to watch on YouTube to, to see this. Cause yeah, it, see, now I want to sit here. I just want to <laughs> sit here with a beer and stare at this forever. <laughs> is that wrong? No, no, but you like, can do that because it's just going to keep going and you can try to get it. But back to Trev Alberts. I think he deserves the extension. I think he exter- extent, uh, deserves the pay raise. Listen, he's got a huge stadium project that's going on. They need to re- raise at least a half a billion the dollars. Question, okay, so here's the question I have is the why. Why what? The political hit or why the extension in the pay rate? Why the political hit and where does it come from? Jealousy. From? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe I do and I'm just not, I'm holding back right now. Damn. Where do you think it came from? Could it be Regents? Could it be somebody at UNO? I mean, it's got to be. Okay, so here's my thing. I'm going to say UNO, and I'm not saying that in the sense of, okay, this shouldn't be any kind of secret because, okay, it's all state of Nebraska. Yeah. So it's all coming. It's it's not like uh, Drake, you, you got a Drake you're, you're, you're sporting the Drake Bulldogs Drake made the here. FCS Plus for yeah. the very first time. Yeah. It's not like Drake sent agents over into Nebraska to do a hit piece on Trev Albert. Yeah. It's not like any of this came from outside of the state of Nebraska. Well, anything within the state of Nebraska means it also had to probably come from within the University of Nebraska system as a whole. I'm with you. It, I'm just it, saying this came, really weird. This came from within the system. This was an internal hit piece, is what it was, and I think it originated at UNO. And and I don't know why. Um, there, there's a lot of questions that go around this. It to me, it's frivolous. It doesn't matter. It's apples to oranges. Two different athletic departments. Two different missions. Which, if if I read, I mean, the thing is though, too, when I read the article. And it is a well-researched article. Absolutely. The numbers are accurate. But I'm also sitting here looking at it going, yes, this is exactly how every athletic department in the country, let me rephrase it, every state university athletic department in the country manages money. There is a flow of dollars between departments within the athletic department. There is a flow of dollars back and forth between the university and the athletic department. I mean, the only thing I would look at is if were you specifically trying to hide I think you're losses? trying to. Emba- I think you're trying to. Emba- no, he yeah. wasn't trying to hide losses. No, and it's. I don't think he was trying to hide losses. I think it's. Here's losses. We got to pay those bills somehow. Here, we're going to pay them with money from over here by moving it over there. Guess what we do That's with our it. own households? Yeah. Oh, shit. I got to go pay for a transmission for Owen's for Owen's van. I got to take that out of my savings account. Sorry, Owen, I had to use you as an example, but that's an example. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. But it is what it is. It it's is one what of those it is. Like, hey, we're going to maybe go out for a movie this week. You know what? Maybe it's dinner night instead. Yeah. So it's just one, but it happened because they got wind of a contract extension and a pay raise and they wanted to embarrass him. I I fully believe that. Here's the thing that I thought though was really interesting about that. You and I were talking about, um, dude, getting guests, lining up guests for the off season. That was something that was an idea you had last year. That was really, really popular. We had some dude. Cleet, right here. Cleet was one of our guests. And, and he randomly pops into my house, right? It happens all the time. Yes. When you're at Travis's house. The, <laughs> this is no a, joke, they, dude. They, it does kind of happen. This is what drives Husker fans nuts, is because they think I'm such a hater, but former players like me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a thing. So, but you know, one of the things I thought that was kind of interesting. So, I mean, we talked to Doug Ewald more than a few times. Yeah. Doug's been a guest on the podcast. You got a guy that has in like huge amounts of intrinsic knowledge 
about a couple of different athletic departments here in the state. You got a guy who knows politics within the state. I mean, Doug's one of those guys who he knows stuff. He knows people. And he knows people who are like, yeah, you can't say my name. He knows that kind of people. So it was interesting talking to him because even he was like, yeah, Trev gave me a list of, yeah, here's some stuff you're, we can't have you talking about in a public forum. But and that happens everywhere. It does. And, but Doug was very open to coming on the, on the podcast and oh my God, interesting as all hell. That was such a great interview. If you go back and we were talking about like, God, could you imagine getting Trev on here? That would be kind of interesting. But it, then, I, I love Trev. Trev no, and I, I go think, back a long time, but, no, but th- he's guarded. But I think it would. But that was the thing: is that as interesting as I think that would be, he would never do it because I think he very specifically is like, okay, my role in all of this. Can you imagine? Because we're dropping f bombs and drinking beer. Trev and, ain't going to do that. No, and I've had conversations with Trev because I've been with him where we've both drank beer, and I've asked him about the UNO thing, and give me the breakdown on it, and he was like, all right, here's what fucking happened, and here was my role in it, and here's how all of that played out, and here's how it came to be. He will never publicly discuss that, but he he will publicly discuss nothing. Nothing. He's guarded. And one of the things with him in this regards with that article and with any commentary on that article, he didn't hear Trev say anything. No, because he takes a high road, which is fine, which he should. And it is. He's going to take that high road, but he's. It's also one of those. Do you want to have? Do you want to avoid controversy? Don't say anything. Don't address it. Don't address it. Didn't happen. Yeah. He has the support of Ted Carter. Yeah. And he doesn't have to address it because he's sitting there going like, okay, yeah, I did what I did because it was the right thing to do. I mean, I'm talking about all the budgetary stuff. He knows that's how you handle that at that level. And that's how everybody handles it at a reasonably run athletic department from a financial standpoint. So I'm telling you, running an athletic department is not easy, but but athletic departments are valuable to universities. There's a reason. Listen, and I'm going to address the camera straight on here. There's a reason like a place like Augustana has added hockey or I'll go to where I went to school, Grandview University, which has added football. Uh, and a bunch of other sports. Why? Not because they make money. It's because they bring student athletes to the school, which in return pay tuition, which get people on campus, which equals money for the university, Rob. It does. It does. And sometimes that money's got to flow back into the athletic department. 100%. And it's, if you look at a power five universities, it's what is it? It's two to three per year run in the black. And Nebraska is one of the very few. University of Washington, I don't know what it is, but they figured out how to do it up there. And they're one of the other schools well, that consistently I'll, does I'll it use, as well. Listen, I, I've said it before on this podcast. My daughter works at the University of Mississippi. When she arrived there five years ago, Lane Kiffin wasn't there. They had several dorms that were empty. She works in student housing. They were like, oh, my God. I mean, she's under uh, – She's she does marketing. Her job is to get people to stay in the dorms and, and stay there even after, like, their freshman or sophomore years. They had two dorms that weren't even being used. Well, those are being used now. They're tearing down two old ones and building several new ones because, you know they what? They trouble finding space for incoming yes. freshmen you, each of the last few years. But you know why that is? Because football's Football. winning. Okay, that's what athletics means to a college university. If you get sick and tired of why um, coaches make a boatload of money, sometimes the tail wags the dog. Exactly. So um, I'm glad Trev got the extension. I'm glad he got the pay raise. I think it's very well deserved. Um, real quickly, Fred Hoiberg's off to a five and zero start. They beat Oregon State uh, 84-63. First five and zero start since 2008-2009. Was Barry Collier the coach then? I'm trying to even think there. No, I think it was. I think it was Doc. Was it Doc? I think God. it was Doc at that time. I can't remember. I know it's crazy. It's though. It's not like we paid a lot of attention to Nebraska well, basketball then, anyway. Uh, we don't pay a lot now, but you know, I'm a Fred fan. Uh, Fred is the first story when he played when he was a senior at Ames High. Was the first story I ever had on television at, at KCC in Des Moines. So I have this. He wouldn't even remember. He probably didn't even know me, right? But it's one of those. 
if we ever to get a chance to get him in the basement, which I think would be fun, his brother lives here in Omaha. Uh, it, it's just I, I want Fred to succeed. Fred's one of the good dudes. Well, and he, I think he's he is, and I mean, he came in that same year as Frost, and everybody thought it's like God talking about hitting the jackpot yeah. in two sports. You know why he's lasted and Scott didn't? Because uh, because Fred's a good man. No, I, I agree, and I think he is, and I think he's a reasonably solid coach. But man, when you look at transfers and injuries. That's one of those situations where I look at him and I do kind of wonder, like, God has just has just luck not been on his side. I, I think a little bit of that, a like little bit of that, and then he, and COVID right away. I mean, that created something. I I I've never wanted somebody to succeed as much as I want Fred Hoiberg to su- succeed because he's just that good of a dude. All right, time for some uh, viewer comments and uh, questions. Let's go to the newsroom. We call it the newsroom. It's a fucking curtain with holes behind it. <laughs> But hey, uh, what did you think of this? The second beer, by I the loved way? it. Uh, this beer is incredible. Yeah, both are both are amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, this first beer I drink, it works uh, as a beer. It, it, as far as work, beer go, it works. It, it works. works. <laughs> you know, that's that's Owen speak for like I'm doing everything I can to not slur my words. Uh, in fact, I got to read these, so I'm gonna do what I can here. Yeah. Um, this this <laughs> this one comes from Marty. Uh, it seemed like Wisconsin adjusted to what Nebraska was doing on off- offense after the first two scores, but Nebraska kept doing the same thing with the same results. Is it bad coaching or lack of experience in the players or both? That one comes from Marty. I think it's a good question. I, I thought Wisconsin did make some adjustments. It's, I would probably say from a coaching standpoint, it's far easier to make adjustments defensively than it is offensively. It's very rare that you see an offense get shut down for like two quarters and then all of a sudden explode in the late second quarter, third quarter. It's it's far more often to see an offense come out throwing haymakers and have a defense come out. Okay, we got to do this. We got to make these adjustments. I just think it's easier to make those defensive adjustments. I think there's a little bit more of a um, intricate – Choreography. I'm not sure how to put it on offense. Choreography is a good word. I like the word. Yeah, choreography. I mean it's 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 it, there's a lot of refinement there. Now I'm not saying defense doesn't have. It's not like you're just lining up like a bunch of freaking chickens with their heads cut off and getting after it. It's there on defense as well too. But offense, so much goes into practicing those plays and getting them right on offense. That trying to adjust from a from a defensive standpoint, I think, is easier than trying to do it offensively. It's not like you suddenly just oh, it was working for a quarter and a half, and now it's not, and we're going to suddenly make these wholesale changes to adjust. The thing is, you've got to have a few different things. One, you've got to have, um, you've got to have an acumen for a larger playbook to be able to make those adjustments. You've got to be really good at running 25 plays to make those adjustments because you'll come out in the first quarter and run 10 or 15 plays. And if a few of them are really successful and you do some really good things and the defense adjusts to them, if you're really good at doing 25 or 30 things, 25 or 30 plays – Oh, they adjusted to 15 of them. Guess what? We got another 15 we're going to throw at you. If you're good at 15, if you've got 10 or 15 plays you've gotten really good at and the defense adjusts to those, guess what? You don't you don't have anything else in the back pocket. That's it. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's in Tom Osborne, that was the thing that was great about Osborne is that when you've got a ton of talent when you've got a huge amount of depth. And we've talked about the depth at Nebraska where you could lose three offensive linemen. Guess what? The backups are all conference caliber guys also. They're not there right now. No, but I mean back in the 80s, back in the 90s, yeah. You lost an all you you lost a first team all conference offensive lineman. Guess who's coming in? An honorable mention, all conference offensive no. linemen. I mean, it's just the talent depth was different then. Guess what? When you've got that kind of talent, you can get really good at running 25 different plays. 
So if the defense adjusts to 10 or 15 of them, screw that shit. We're going to run another 10 or 15. We haven't run yet, and you're not going to be able to stop those either. And you can do that all game long. I mean, so we would see teams adjust to, to, to your first quarter plays. You'd hit them with stuff they hadn't seen yet. By the time they adjusted to that at halftime, guess what? When you're making adjustments at halftime to Tom Osborne's first half plays, he's coming out in the third quarter with stuff we haven't even run yet. Makes sense. Makes sense. So it's, I mean, Nebraska's, but, but Nebraska's not there. They're not good enough to do that. Okay. They're so, going to be good enough to, you're going to get 5, 10, 15 things that they're going to be halfway good at. And if the defense is capable of adjusting to those, eh, you're going to hit a, your stuff's going to slow down a lot for the rest of the game. Next question. Next question comes from Michael, the active duty Husker in Honolulu, Honolulu Hawaii. How does Purdy's individual performance rank amongst the other QBs' individual performance in previous games? I'd say the. I mean, it's the best I've seen. I. I Real, I mean, other than that last play, which I okay, I get it. He threw the yeah. pick, didn't turn the ball over. Had I mean, had some nice passes. The scramble for the touchdown was outstanding. Um, it's the best we've had this year. And I mean, and part of me sitting here going like, "Guys, is he just not showing something, and that's why he hasn't played, or is it really truly because the guy's been fighting an injury all year?" I don't know. I think he's been fighting an injury all year, yeah. and they've said that, and even Purdy talked about it. Uh, next question. Our next question comes from Eric. What's our plan on offense? I don't get the play calling in different series. It almost feels scripted and unnatural, like it doesn't flow with what's happening or slash working in the actual game. And again, I um, I attribute that to the talent that we've got in Lincoln right now. Like I said, you've lost, like I think your top three running backs, three of your top four wide receivers, half the offensive line, Harburg's beat up. That I mean, I keep thinking here about the injuries we've had. I keep thinking about what we started with. Go back to the behind the point spread commentary with Scott Spritzer, where you lose three out of your five offensive linemen in one game, and we ask Scott, "What kind of effect does this have?" And he's like, "Yeah, maybe half a point." Yeah, we're like, "What the hell? How do you lose sixty percent of an own line and it's only worth half a point?" And the answer is, is because Scott's answer was basically. Vegas views those guys essentially as backup quality to begin with, and you're replacing backups with some other backups. It just doesn't change much. But we, I mean, we were hurting to begin with, and then you lose all of those guys. It creates a ton of limitations in terms of what you're able to call, in terms of the decisions you're able to make, in terms of the adjustments that you're able to make as a game goes along. Those are massive, massive limitations. I mean, a team like Michigan, Alabama, Penn State, Georgia, they don't have those kinds of limitations because they've got so much more talent to work with. They have so much more depth to work with. We don't have that. Another one? Yes, we got another one. This one comes from Ryan. Um, Why was a flag not thrown for tripping when Braylon Allen was straight up trucked in overtime? I didn't see it. Oh, I missed that. Was Braylon Allen tripped? He said he was trucked. Trucked. I didn't see it, so you didn't see it, so let's not spend any time on it. Yeah, I missed it. I'd, yeah. I'd have to go back and look at the play. All right, any more? Yeah, I got I got two more here. Okay. Um, I'm going to do questions. this one from Wendell. Wendell? Wendell. What a great name, Wendell. Is this, is this Wendell Boggle? Yeah. Yeah, he, it's a big-time listener, he, okay. and he follows us on Twitter. Beer guy. Beer guy. Beer guy. I think everybody who listens to this podcast is a beer guy. <laughs> His question is, early in the season, you commented that you thought Prime was a good coach, even though you didn't agree with all of his bluster. Taking into account Colorado's train wreck of a season, where do you stand now on his coaching job this season? I don't think it's a train wreck. I still think it's pretty damn good. I I think he, okay. So here's the thing, okay. I'm making a comparison to, to Rule in Nebraska here where 
people had commented on like, oh my God, we've been so close. It's the same thing we've seen the last few years. And I'm sitting here going like, no, it's not. There's a close losses this year are different from close losses. In I'll past give you that. Years. I'll give you that. Same end result, but the process has been so much better. The problem this year is is that we've almost hit that point where we're just barely not exceeding expectations. I mean, if if Nebraska finishes this year five and seven, let's go back to August and say, okay, hey, we're going to finish five and seven. We're going to win some games. We're going to lose some games. It's going to be a five and seven season in rules first year. I think most people would sit back and go, okay, well, you know what? It's better than his first years at Baylor and Temple. And you've said that on this podcast. Um, yeah, this is a guy that kind of – he's a builder. He's going to change some stuff. It's not going to be a year one thing. Fine. Most people are going to be okay with that. Now all of a sudden we're sitting here and it's fire sadder, sadder field. We need a new O coordinator. The coaching decisions have been horrendous. The game management has sucked. This is not – not what we need in Lincoln right now. You know what? Let's maybe even fire rule. We need to get somebody else in there. This is stuff I've seen the no, last I know. two I weeks on social media. It's because we've hit this point where all of a sudden they've been just good enough that those expectations are... They've changed. The expectations changed. The, I, the, the expectation goalposts just got moved back and if you're a football if you're any sports program you want that all of a sudden you want those expectations you to want be me higher. on that wall it you is. need me on that wall god i love that movie <laughs> anyway but yeah that's what happened the expectations changed they got higher and they got higher in season colorado's got what four wins yeah i think they're Lost, what, six in a row, seven in yeah. a row? Yeah. But listen, they've still, as much as it's been a debacle the last couple weeks. They had one weeks, win last year. I, I, I still, I, I think the jury's still out on, on, I think people want him to fail so badly 100%. because of his antics. And I, I'm not going to hold judgment for another two or three years. And honestly, if Dion had a different mentality, if he was like, hey, we're going to love these guys up, and he wasn't coming in and doing like, I'm bringing my own luggage in, it's Louie, or yeah. when he's talking about the old line, which is trying to protect his kid, you might want to stay on good terms with those guys yeah. a little bit. I'm just saying fucking maybe. Uh, but when he's talking about like, yeah, we got to hit the portal and get new guys on the old line. How does how does that okay? Well, half the old lines portal guys to begin with. So he's talking about his own players, and we got to get better guys in here. If he wasn't doing any of that, if he did the same methodology, if he did go get like all of a sudden behind the scenes, you noticed, holy shit, Colorado just lost 80 dudes and brought in 80 new dudes. We'd be sitting there going, like, okay, well, that's a little sketch, but Shit, it is what it is. And Dion didn't say anything about it and then just stayed positive. We're going to keep working these guys. We're going to keep practicing. We're going to keep trying to improve. We're going to try and keep fighting this battle. Nobody would be sitting here rooting against him. True. He invites his own criticism. Big time. He does. That he, makes- and, and, and it's one of those things, if he succeeds, great. The, the, the biggest Take mistake the I think he made it. is he made the switch at, at old coordinator because they actually put better offensive numbers up with the old coordinator than they did with an analyst who can't even coach. He has to be in the it's, – it's a weird situation. Listen, he's still learning. I don't think he's a bad coach. This is his third year, but I think in terms of – But at this level – He may – here's the thing. Colorado's better now – than it was a year than ago. they were the last couple of years. Yep. That's an improvement. 100%. All right, last question. So the last question comes from Jason Warner. Um, and Jason gives us beer. He does. Good beer, dude. And it actually says here that he's got some more that he's going to send out here soon. Yeah, so. I, love, I love Jason. He says, the first nine minutes, the two fourth down stops, the last drives showed so much heart and that foot on the throat mentality. But for the rest of the game, it seemed mostly flat. I get success breeds more consistency with it, but in your opinion, why the sudden drop in energy after going up 
I, I uh, you know, it's not, I, I attribute that one. That's another guy gets gets a paycheck to the guy across the line from you. Wisconsin made some adjustments to what Nebraska was doing, and it's hard to counter those adjustments offensively. And I think the other thing is, I don't, it's hard when it's a new quarterback for a defense. Wisconsin doesn't have a feel for what Nebraska is going to do with Chubba Purdy in there, and he had some capabilities. You just you got one drive, and it was all pretty much all on the ground. By the way. It's that last drive of the game against Maryland. That's really the only tape you have on Chuba. So when you got him coming in as the starter and you haven't really seen the guy before, that's difficult to prepare for. It God, it really, really is. I mean, it's we talk about you're playing a team first game of the season, and last year's quarterback graduated. They got a new guy you really haven't seen before. How do you prep for that? You, you can't. You can't. Or let's say you're playing a team, I mean, like Nebraska, for instance. How do you prep for a new head coach and a new, new offensive coordinator? It's hard to do. I mean, it really is. That is not an easy thing to do. Same situation. You got a quarterback you really haven't ever seen before, and I think that hurt Wisconsin early on. They made some adjustments, and it's hard for an offense to make those readjustments to what the defense does. Big thanks to uh, Centris Federal Credit Union, who sponsors the uh, Doc's Diagnosis. Uh, if you haven't watched the Doc's Diagnosis, Dr. Rob takes a look at a couple plays during the uh, previous week's games and uh, gives you his thoughts and kind of what happened on there. So uh, check out uh, the Doc's Diagnosis on our YouTube channel by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, Centris Federal Credit Union is a proud sponsor of the Doc's Diagnosis, which you can watch uh, on the YouTube channel, federally insured, NCUA, equal housing lender. And make sure to check out Behind the Point Spread coming up on Wednesday night as uh, we take a look look at the last regular season week of the season it's brought to you by betfred sports we're joined by vegas insider scott sprites most information you will get out of any college football show hey owen's got a new single out it came out on friday called never stop Owen, i'm telling you it's a, it's an incredible song it's well, uh, thank you yeah it's uh if you haven't heard it go to spotify wherever you listen to your music search owen justice listen to never stop listen to all the other ones they're really, really good singles. And if you want to see Owen live, uh, the album release show is coming up on December 15th at uh, Maloney's Live in Council Bluffs. It's a, it's a smaller, intimate venue. Go to owenjusticemusic.com for your tickets. We'd love to see you over there. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a show, and you'll uh, hear all these songs live. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, make sure to subscribe on your podcast channel, wherever you're listening to this, and enjoy it. Big thanks to Husker Max, who distributes this podcast. Head to huskermax.com for the latest news and opinion from a variety of voices. If you got any questions for Dr. Rob, email doctalksports at gmail.com. Follow Dr. Rob on Twitter at doctalksports, and like us on Facebook. Subscribe to YouTube, and follow us on TikTok. Just search Doc talk sports for dr rob zad oh i want to thank cleet blakeman for stopping by he smells that was a total surprise do you still smell him though the dude has like a scent Mm. i want that cologne do you smell it owen oh yeah yeah he's like an elf he he really just he's like (laughs) man he's he's potent potent for dr rob zadiska for owen justice i'm travis justice we will see you next week on the doc talk podcast presented by betfred sports